Let's remind ourselves of our read of part of our reading today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. Verse 17 and verse 18. Then Jesus answered, We are not ten Christ. Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Lord God, speak to us through your word. We ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior. Amen. When I have been uh, thinking about this theme, thanksgiving, all as we say, in other words, gratitude, I came across an article that was done, or that was written, sorry, by a lady by the name Lisa Apello. And that lady highlights 12 principles or 12 points that shows, or 12 points on the power of gratitude. And then when I was reading the Bible, the Lord led me to this passage where we read of these 10 lepers who were healed by our Lord Jesus Christ. And when I related both that article and this reading, I came to realize that surely we can find the 12 points in this man who came to give thanks to God. So today's sermon is the power of gratitude the power of gratitude. What happens when you give thanks? What happens when you show gratitude to God? And let me narrate briefly about this passage. As we read, we find that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem and he reached the border of Samaria and Galilee. And that is where he met these ten lepers. Note on the border. Why on the border? Probably because at that place there were no people residing there. Why? If one had leprosy, the Torah or the law of Moses said or stated that you have to be in isolation. You have to be separated from other people. So that's why you find they are on the border there, where there are no people there. And again, you find that when they saw Jesus, they, they were standing at a distance. They could not come closer. So these people can relate to us even now when we are practicing social distance, when we are not greeting one another because of COVID-19. So these men stood at a distance. And I want to believe that they had formed a choir. Because when they saw Jesus, they started shouting to him. I want to believe they were in unison. And they were calling upon Jesus. And note how they called Jesus. Number one, they called him Jesus. And Jesus is the name that he was given even before he was born. Because prophet Isaiah prophesied that Jesus, the Savior, a Savior will be born unto the world. So they were calling upon Jesus, the Savior. Can you save us now from this predicament? Can you save us from this curse that is upon us? Can you, can you lift us from this suffering we have been going through? And number two, they called him master. They recognized him as a person with authority. That Jesus, with your power, you can command this leprosy to leave us. And number three, they called him 
one who is merciful. Because they are saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So they knew Jesus to be compassionate. Maybe they have seen him. Or maybe they had heard the good act that Jesus was doing to people. So that is how they addressed Jesus. Though they stood at a distance, though they could not come to Jesus closer, I love this man. Why? Because, listen to this. Listen to this. This man refused to be limited by what they were going through. They saw Jesus as the master. They saw Jesus as the savior. And what did they do? They chose to use what they had. The voice. Yes, we cannot come closer to you, Jesus. Yes, we cannot even come to touch you because of our suffering, but we can shout. Praise be to God. We can shout. And so, they shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They used what they have. Because they refused to be held by what they are suffering from. Praise be to God. So, what do you have? What do you have? Refuse to be limited by what? You may be suffering from. And so, they called upon Jesus. And Jesus responded, responded to their call. He did not tell them that you are healed. But he referred them to the Old Testament requirement. He told them, according to the Torah or the law of Moses, in Leviticus chapter 14, it requires that if one suffers from reprose, you are supposed to go and show yourself to the priest. The priest could do three things. Number one, a priest would check if you have leprosy or you are healed. And number two, a priest would again offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving for the person after being healed. And then number three, what the priest would do, he is the one who was to declare that a person has been clean, is clean now from reprose, and now you are free to join other people. Niya alikuwa natangazia mtu ya kwaba, sasa unaweza toka quarantine, now you can go back and join your family. It is only the priest who could do that. And so these men were on their way to go and show their, them uh, to Yes. So they were on their way to show themselves to the priest. And they had not gone far. When they realized, oh my goodness, I am healed. And the other was telling, oh, I can also see that I am healed. The other nine went on the Yahweh. We are not told whether they went to the priest or whether they went to their homes. Only the Samaritan man chose to go back to Jesus. And through him, let me now highlight the 12 points that show the power of gratitude. Number one, gratitude glorifies God. Because note, when this man came to Jesus, Jesus said, only this one has come to glorify God. So my brother, my sister, whenever you come and stand here to glorify, to give thanks, whenever you come with that attitude of gratitude before God, remember always that you are coming to glorify God. Gratitude glorifies God. God. As that lady I said, said in her article that as we exalt not the gifts but the giver, you can't exalt the one who has blessed you 
So it helps us realize that all we have comes not because of us, but from God. Praise be to God. So, thanksgiving, gratitude glorifies God. Go and read Psalm number 50, verse 14, 15, and then, then verse 25. Then number two, gratitude help us see God. This man came and now pointed all people to Jesus. This is the man who has healed me. Praise be to God. He now led people to see Jesus. That I came, I shouted, Jesus heard me, addressed my problem. Look at this man. He came and worshipped him. Praise be to God. So, gratitude, in other words, opens our spiritual eyes. The more we thank God, the more we see him working in us. Gratitude helps us sense God's presence, his personal care, and his perfect timing. Praise be to God. This man chose not to go to the temple priest as was the tradition, but it points us to Jesus, the highest priest of the order of Melchizedek, according to the book of Hebrew. Praise be to God. This man chose to point us to Jesus, to see Jesus, God the healer. Praise be to God. And then number three, Gratitude puts us squarely in God's will. And what is God's will? God's, one of God's will is for us to be thankful always in season and out of season. This man realized, now I am in the season of healing. Now I am in the season of receiving my health back. Now I should go and give God the thanks. Praise be to God. Yes, so it puts us. When you always have that attitude of giving thanks, you now move to that level of living square at God's will. And what is God's will? As I said, one of God's will is that we be thankful. And then number four, do you know that gratitude brings peace? There is a song that we sing, Count Your Blessing. I don't know whether you have studied that song. Count Your Blessings. Name one, name them one, bye. It does not say, although that may be a, 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 an effect of blessing, count your money, and we are very fond of counting our monies. It doesn't mean count your clothes. It doesn't mean count the pair of shoes that you have. It does, the song does not teach us that we count uh, the many cars that we may have, the many products that we may buy. No. Count your blessing. Why? Because if you count, the more you count your shoes, the more you will realize that, oh my goodness, I thought I had a pair that would match this dress. Now I need to go back now and buy another pair. Are we getting it? Now, did you know, my brothers and sisters, that the more we count the things that we have, sometimes we worry, sometimes we feel that we, don't, we miss this or that. But when we give thanks to God, when we have gratitude, it helps us see God's heart all over our circumstances. When we give thanks to God, it gives us the supernatural peace. You give thanks because of what you already have. Whether much, whether little. And this is what this man sought. The peace to continue. After enjoying the miracle of healing, he sought to continue in peace. Because remember, when Jesus now was sending him, 
I don't know that you are Bible version, but there is one version that says that when Jesus was sending him now again, he said to them, go in peace. And those are the same words we use here. When we are about to conclude the service, and I will again do it today, we send you back in peace. The peace which surpasses all understanding. Because after all, you need that peace. Praise be to God. Peace to rest in God. And then number five. Gratitude draws us to God. The magnitude of God's undeserved kindness draws us to him. The magnitude of God's undeserved. Remember this man was a Samaritan. And the Samaritans and the Jews didn't like each other. So this man realized that Jesus did not discriminate him from others. He was also counted to be among the blessed. So when he realized that I am also healed, this drew him now closer to God. So gratitude, when we realized the grace of God, when we realized God's goodness, this should always draw us closer to God. So my dear brother, my dear sister, whenever you come to give thanks, you are telling God, I want to be closer to you. I want to be near you. Not now, but always. Praise be to God. And number six, blessing, I mean uh, gratitude brings contentment. And it is said, gratitude makes what we have enough. Note that. Gratitude makes what we have enough. This means that if we are not grateful for what God has given us, getting more, let me repeat that. This means that if we are not grateful for what God has given us, getting more will not satisfy us either. And that is one of the greatest lies of the devil. He wants us to believe that the more you get, the more may be contented you will be. If you get a million today, I always listen to those who participate in those uh, rotary things. Now who I want to say, I always hear them say, now today I got 200,000, I will continue because I want to get a million. <laughs> you are thinking that if you get a million, then you'll be contented. Woe unto you. If you get a million, you would think, I wish I had five million. If you get five million, you would think, I wish I had ten million. You will never be contented with the things of this world. But when we learn to be grateful, when we learn to have thanksgiving to God for what he has blessed us with, this is what gives us contentment. Praise be to God. Being thankful is the key to contentment. And then, gratitude deepens our faith. After this man went before Jesus, worshipped him, Jesus declared, your faith, your faith has healed him. Praise be to God. It is only after he went, knelt before Jesus, Jesus spoke and said, your faith, your faith, so whenever you come and stand before God to give thanks, and that's why I encourage people. There are some people who prefer to come to the office. Can I give my thanks here? I always discourage that. I want you to, because it is, you are not bringing thanks to me. I am only a facilitator. I am there to point you to God. You are giving thanks to who? To God, not to the vicar. So that's why you need to come and stand here because this is your faith. You tell our people, this is my God who has done this. Praise be to God. This Samaritan man was not afraid to make whatever Jesus was doing stand and declare. You see this man? 
As I said earlier, he pointed the people to Jesus and he wanted to show, he wanted also again to show his faith where it was. He showed his faith in God. So, gratitude deepens our faith. And then number eight, gratitude leads to joy. <laughs> Remember, this man was shouting with the other ten at Jesus to have mercy on them and heal them. Again now see, when he's coming back, he's shouting again. And he was shouting with joy in him, saying, I am healed. I am healed. So, gratitude leads us to joy. And that's why we have that beautiful song, Psalm 100. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Praise be to God. So this one, the, the, the attitude of gratitude leads us to joy. When we come before the Lord with that gratitude, we are joyful because we recognize him as the great God, him as the one who has blessed us. And then number nine, gratitude defies the lies of the devil. Gratitude defies or cancels the lies of the devil. What is the lie of the devil? Another lie of the devil is you lack this, you lack that. And that is the same principle he used in the Garden of Eden. He showed if you lack, though God has blessed you with this, you lack this. But when you have that attitude of gratitude, that cancels the lies of the devil. Because you tell him, devil, listen to this. You may be pointing to that, but I am thankful because of this. Praise be to God. So you have a testimony. I'm coming to that. That is the last point of testimony. But whenever you start to give gratitude, again you cancel or you defy the lies of the devil of lack. Because you tell him, as we sing in Kikuyu, Kiria mwadhania hete dasho kiangado na kiria itare na kiono jetere ye mwadhani nenyo nete niotuga naga na niore haga ria metere la that what, Lord, you have given me, I give thanks. And even what you have not blessed me with, I know at your will, I shall receive. Praise be to God. And then number 10, gratitude guards us. This one, when I was reading it, I had never thought about it. But did you know that gratitude guards us against envy? Gratitude makes us realize God has given us far more than we deserve. On the other hand, envy makes us want what someone else has. Note, there is enough for everyone. <laughs> That's a very, very... That may be a controversial statement saying that there is enough for everyone. We only realize what we don't have when we compare ourselves with the others. <laughs> that is when, if you compare yourself with another, that is when you come to see as if you don't have this, she has that. She has that, I don't have this. And then you develop that envy, that kind of thing. Yes, a wife may visit another lady. Anaona ya kwamba wamenunua fridge. Ya two doors. Ambayo wana, wanaweka kila kitu. Ye ya kikompea na kare kake. Eh? Eh, anaona sasa ya ile ni bounce. Yangu sasa ni, ni shadow. So when you compare yourself that way, you see that you lack that, you don't have this. And then you have a kind of envy. But when you give thanks to God, that erases that attitude of envy. Praise be to God. And then number 11, 
Gratitude helps us to live in the pleasant. Another great man, Jim Elliot, said, wherever you are, be all there. Wherever you are, be all there. My brother, my sister, that may be difficult to do in the rush and worry of life. Because we are always, I said somewhere, I, don't, I can't remember where, that when you are driving, if you are, when you drive in our roads, Kenya, sometimes I wonder, where are we really rushing to? Where are we? Because we seem over, almost everybody is on a rush. But sometimes I laugh. Yule alikupita na madharau. Alikupita. Alafu unamkuta kwa ba amepaki gari hapa tu. Hapa tu. So you wonder. Yani huyu bio bio yote. Alikuwa nakuja hapa tu. You wonder where are we rushing to? My dear brothers, my dear sisters. Gratitude help us to live in the present. You realize this is the day that the Lord has made. You realize this is the bread the Lord has given me today. So that refers to what Jesus said that we be praying. Give us our daily bread. So gratitude leads us to that. That you give or you live in the present. Where you are now, where you are today, you run to give thanks. And then lastly, gratitude is a testimony. When we thank God openly and acknowledge what he has done for us, we proclaim a personal caring God to the world. Graced voices are very familiar with worship experience. And most of us here. But do you know that this man brought a worship experience on the road? They were standing there at the border. And he came back shouting, I am healed, I am healed. And he knelt before Jesus. And I want to believe the disciples, they were amazed. And the people who were there, led by Jesus, the high priest, there was a short, although it may not have been long, but there was a kind of a short worship experience. Jesus was worshipped on the road because of this act of testimony of this man, choosing to go back and give thanks. So whenever we come to give thanks, whenever we start before the Lord and give him thanks, we are creating a kind of a worship experience. We have experienced this. Our Lord has blessed us this way. Our Lord has been merciful to me. My Lord has been gracious to me. So I lift my hands to worship him, to praise him. Praise be to God. And again, you bear a testimony. This is the doing. I now conclude reminding you, brothers and sisters. Read again verse 17. And you will realize that Jesus expected all the ten to come back and give thanks. And that's why he is asking, where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? At that point, my dear brother, my dear sister, I usually say these words. They may seem to be harsh, but I feel that I have to say them. That sometimes Christians, whenever they are told or whenever it is announced to them that we shall come and give thanks, some may say, oh, no besha marenda. So always you interpret coming to God to give thanks. It is about money, giving money, not to God, to them. So if you are coming to give for the sake of the vicar, please don't. Please don't, because you will not be blessed. 
That's why I said it may seem to be harsh. But I want you to be blessed. Come and give thanks because you know you are God. If you know God blesses you, if you know God has done great things in your life, if you trust in this God and you are continuing to trust him and you know that I trust this God and whatever I am expecting from him, surely he's going to do it. Or you may have that level of faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who said, even if God does not save me from this fire, I will still stand praising him. Praise be to God. I don't know whether you have moved to that level that you are not thanking God because of the more that he's going to give you. But you are going to give thanks to God because you know him as the almighty God. Because you worship him as God and you know that my faith rests on this God. Not on conditional things that God is going to give me. So whether he will release those things, whether I am going to move from this or from that, I will still thank God because he's my God. He's the almighty God. Praise be to God. That is the right attitude of giving thanks to God. Praise be to God. And again, hapo hata siku when I expect amen, kwa sababu sasa hapo najua, I may have touched on someone. So my dear brother, my dear, my dear sister, Jesus expects us to give thanks. To give thanks. That's why he said, where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? So all of us here, brothers and sisters, we have a reason to give thanks to God. And whenever we give thanks, please remember those points that is a testimony. We live in the present. It guards us against envy. It defies Satan's lies. Leads us to joy deepens our faith, brings contentment, draws us to God, brings peace, puts us square in God's will, help us to see God, and glorifies God. The name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.